it's a pleasure to have you here on the channel. Uh, I've, been, I've been wanting to meet you for a while, and uh, before I'm even going to let you introduce yourself, I want to ask you a simple question. What are you drinking? Uh, I am I am actually drinking a uh, a green tea. Oh, very nice, very healthy, mm -hmm. very healthy choice for a healthy video, a healthy <laughs> discussion. And uh, I'm gonna let you introduce yourself. Great, yeah, no, my name is Josh. Uh, I run a YouTube channel called Late Game Crypto. I've been doing that for about three years now. It is a, a Cardano based YouTube channel. Uh, I, I like to create content uh, for what this technology can do. And and when it comes to Cornucopius, I think Cornucopius is is a uh, the the project that i've covered the most on my youtube channel out of any other project i'm a, a lifelong gamer uh played games for as long as i can remember um a, a huge gaming enthusiast and i think that the the world needs something like like cornucopius it needs blockchain to be integrated into the gaming space because the the current gaming space people don't realize is 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 a mess right now uh so yeah, yeah. that's 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 me. Uh, I'm a content creator. I'm a gamer and a Cardano enthusiast. Yeah, I I, I love it. Uh, the 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 way, the, the the way that I observe the term metaverse. Uh, I, people are always like, oh, the metaverse has no future or whatever. In my view, the metaverse has been here for for twenty plus years. It's, yeah, it's, absolutely. It's gaming, online gaming, is the metaverse. Absolutely. That that's that's one one thing that uh, I do want to mention as well. Whenever someone asks me, so what is the metaverse? And I tell them it's an MMORPG. That's a metaverse. Have you ever played um, World of Warcraft? I have. You have played a metaverse then. The only thing that's different is that this time with the blockchain technology, we will have real world assets. We will, we will, we will have real world currency that we earn in these games. And that's what it is. When someone says metaverse is definitely like, what the hell are you talking about? Anyway, uh, moving on, ahead, I do have a couple of talking points here. So I do want to dive a little bit deeper into Cornucopias now that our introductions are mostly um, over here. So uh, we mentioned the word metaverse, right? And Cornucopias, by definition, in my opinion at least, is what a metaverse is supposed to be. It's more than a game, and that's what I try to tell people, especially when I make videos about Cornucopias. I always say, this is not a, a play to earn game. You, you can't call it, you can't categorize it as such, because it is a proper metaverse, such as so much more than a game, because of how many things it offers. And so I think it's a good place to start here. Um, do you have a sort of shorter definition about what would you say Cornucopias is? Uh shorter i'm not so sure uh, <laughs> like when, I, when when i i tell people about what cornucopius is uh i, I typically start with it, it's an mmorpg you know mm -hmm. it's a it's a, a game that's that's built on blockchain uh that's that's the simplest way to to get people to understand it because people understand games people understand like you know that this is what video games have been doing uh it, it's the the blockchain integration part that, that people seem to have some struggle uh, understanding but it's 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 really no different than you know any new age game with just some new features that are brought on by new technologies and that's just what what cornucopius is enthusiastic about is the technology side of things exactly exactly that that that's very true so in a sense uh, metaverse is an mmorpg uh, as we already stated and i think with the head nodding you have approved of what i said <laughs> so as far as what, when someone jumps into Cornucopias, right? What kind of gameplay loop should they expect? And what kind of game genres on top of that um, can we expect to have? I know about some of them. Well, of course, we already have the racing. So right. uh, what kind of gameplay loop do you think is going to be uh, the one that is going to hook people in? Uh, you know... Um... The, what I what I like to tell people about Cornucopius is that there's going to be a gameplay element for everybody that calls themselves a gamer. Uh, so the the sheer size of the in-game universe, which I, I'm sure is something that we'll get into uh, at some time <laughs> at some point, um, but uh, it's uh, it, it's going to contain something for everybody. It's just, you know, they'll exist in different areas of it. So the racing, like you said, is is uh, the, the first gameplay loop that they've released. And it's it's really, it's it's unique. Uh, the, the realm of um, anti-grav racing uh, hasn't been a genre that has really taken off in the recent history of modern gaming. So 
what Cornucopius is trying to do is they're trying to take what they've seen from a lot of uh, a lot of the most successful anti-grav racing things and and turn it into an esports grade level game. Uh, and they've they've done a great job so far at that. It is a challenge. It's a very challenging game. Uh, and and that's something that they hope to sort of drive forward as an original piece of work. But there's also going to be a shooter element to it in the uh, foreseeable future. Um, there, there's going to be crafting elements to it, which every MMO enthusiast loves to participate in, is the crafting elements. There's going to be survival elements to it that are very uh, unique to, to Cornucopius. They try to bring a lot of realism to it in, in the realm of, uh, of how complex economic mechanics can be but also what that th those mechanics look like in a real world context the adaptability of it and uh, the the way that you navigate yourself through the 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 cornucopius universe is just imagine what it is that you want to do in a video game you know if you want to be creative if you want to be competitive if you want to go you know really freaking fast uh, that th mm. those are capabilities that you'll have within the universe. It's it's a very uh, open world, and I, I think people will perceive it as uh, a a, a multi-genre game um, be because of like how much different gameplay types that that will be available, in it. and that there will be capabilities for people to even create their own gameplay types, create their own games within the Cornucopius universe. So it's 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 very open. Uh, to to I, I think people will be really attracted to things like the shooter elements because that's yeah. really popular. Um, but but also just every MMO, you know, with with crafting and uh, and and uh, player progression systems and survival elements. Those are all things that are huge in the industry of gaming right now. And all of it will be interconnected inside of the world of Cornucopias. So uh, that's yeah, that, that that's one of the things that in Cornucopias that I really love. Uh, when I first started up, the developer early alpha closed version, whatever you want to call it, that, that I have installed on my PC, and I wanted to try out the racing, right? So I went to the main menu and I was like, where do I click to start the racing? But there, there is no button to click and start racing. You gotta go to to the freaking train station, take, take the train, the tram, you know, to, to take you to the hotel where the little pods are, they take you to the racing tracks. So you have to physically get there. And the first time I tried it, I couldn't figure out how to do it. I was watching a video about how to do it at the same time doing it. And uh, I had this feeling, man, that I didn't have in a long, long time. Where I, I didn't have it since I started playing Minecraft back in 2011. And I had to search up crafting recipes online. And I had that feeling. I was like, man, this is awesome. You know, mm -hmm. th this part right here, this is freaking awesome. It's actually, it's, it's, it's funny that you, you, you talk about the, the way that it's all interconnected. And I think this is one of the advantages that Cornucopius has in the realm of uh, both the, the gaming industry and the, the uh, blockchain gaming world. Um, what, what people, I think, don't realize about gaming, people that might not be experienced in that world, is that MMOs tend to have larger rates of player retention. Uh, they're, they're, they're much more significantly uh, draw people in. Uh, gamers play for longer periods of time. Uh, gamers uh, spend spend more time of their life. And I think that's true if you, you look at, you know, uh, games throughout history. Everybody's played Call of Duty before, but not a lot of people still play Call of Duty 2. Uh, but, but World of Warcraft... People, that, that came out in 2004. Yeah. People are still playing World of Warcraft. That's that's the the advantageous difference I think with different game genres is that Cornucopius will be around in 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 20 30 years because that's just the way that it's designed. I think that's also the way Cardano is designed. You know, having in mind uh, not months, not years, but decades ahead. And, you know, that that's why I'm so bullish on Cardano. I'm so bullish on Cornucopia that they have the long-term vision. But to go back on that point about uh, MMORPGs, you know, we still see the stories online. I have a friend of mine who has over 350 days inside of 
uh, World of Warcraft. So over 360 days spent inside of the game. That's not, he doesn't own anything in there, you know, it's, it's not a blockchain game, but that's, there's many, many stories like this, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people watching here have a lot of time in World of Warcraft or some other MMO everybody has has their favorites. Um, World of Warcraft is not my personal favorite, but I have spent my fair share of time inside, inside of MMOs. It's one of the reasons why I don't start playing MMOs anymore. I'm like, man, I don't have a month right now. I can't, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so so that brings me to another point. You know, MMOs are known for, for having insanely big open world maps, and uh, when you when you start, you're in one section, and you gotta level up to get to the second section because otherwise the monsters will slay you very fast, and there, there's no point to go to the other section of the maps. And um, after playing for 15, 20 days, you you have definitely not seen the full map still. So uh, to to this point, how do, do you know do you know this? How big will the Cornucopia's map be? Do we have any idea? Oh yeah, yeah, we do, and I think this is one of the points where people uh, are really missing the the what the future of Cornucopius is going to look like. Uh, because as as it's looking right now, that this actually wasn't an intention from from the beginning. They they weren't trying to be the biggest in game universe in Web three. But as it's looking, that's probably what's going to end up happening. At least the biggest handcrafted mm -hmm. in game universe in Web three. Uh, with the, the current roadmap of the uh, Kalido Valley Resort and the 12 different uh, themed zones that mm -hmm. are built into Cornucopius, it, it will be the total in-game size of about 25 times the size of GTA V. Oh, that's, that's the, wow. Yeah. And all of it handcrafted? Yes. Yeah. That is no, absolutely so, insane. So, there, there's some procedural generation, but it, it mostly comes in the realm of like the texture of rocks uh, or, or, or the bark on trees, different details like that. But it, it's all handcrafted where uh, different elements, different different hills and chasms and the landscape of everything, that is all touched by an artist in the Cornucopius wow. universe. Yeah. Wow. Uh, how will we get from the from Kalido Valley to let's say I want to go to the medieval zone? I don't know if you have a medieval zone, but just you know, hypothetically speaking, how would I get to 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 a zone? There will be a number of different ways. So the the most accessible way for any free to play player, because the Cornucopius will be a free to play game, uh, you you can Mr. use Inspector, the public transportation system. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> that was serious. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, so there will be a public transportation system. You can get on a train just like you see at a at the Kalido Valley, um, and and that train can take you to the different zones, uh, and and that'll be the the easiest free way to get around. Uh, th there's also a a way that you can get around using the different uh, vehicle NFTs that that are purchasable. Um, from last I heard, I think there's going to be like an autopilot feature where mm -hmm. you can jump in your car. And, and it'll take you to where you want to go. So that's yeah. That the, those are be the the different ways that you can you can travel around. As far as within the zones, because each of the different zone areas are, are each going to be quite big in themselves. Uh, I think each of the thirty six different zones are, are about the size of a, a Fortnite map. Any any average Fortnite map, you know, after or before they make changes. Um, wow. There will be different different ways to get around. There will be mounts that you can put on horses that can help you get around those smaller different areas. There will be hoverboards that you can use to get to point A to point B faster. Um, and, and a lot of those things will come in the form of NFTs. So uh, that's those are the different ways of traveling around this huge huge universe uh, awesome man I, I i definitely can't wait just just to get around a little bit you know i always when i jump into a new game i, I want to get around a little bit i want to get a feel of it um i want to explore yeah. i want to see the sights and you know that that that's one of the the things that where a tr the train and cornucopia comes in very handy i i am beyond impressed with this i knew the map was going to be big but holy so yeah i, I want to touch upon a topic here that i know a lot of people watching me will be interested a lot of people watching my channel what we cover here all the time is play to earn uh play to airdrop we're trying to help people how you know where to put their attention to where to put their time in uh which games can offer them um what 
kind of rewards in return. So uh, I did want to talk about this. So the earning opportunities for players, play to earn, airdrops, learn to earn, build to earn. Uh, when I did my Cornucopias videos way back uh, last year, over a year ago, uh, I also covered this. I, I spoke a little bit about the play to earn and the learn to earn as well as the build to earn. But I'm curious about what you have to say about this as well as the new craze for play to airdrop is um, anything like that maybe on the table if you have any information. Cornucopius is a very game-centric project where they're all about making the gameplay a, a certain kind of experience and not diluting that experience with something like, like you know, monetary gains or something like that. People that want to come and just play the game, that's going to be an available option for them. But when it comes to uh, the different earning opportunities, uh, th there will be a, a quite a wide diverse set of, of different... Uh, uh, availability within it. So w what I find most interesting is the way that they drive the in-game economy, the way that they introduce new resources into the cornucopious economy. Uh, they, they, they sort of leave it up to the community to build those assets. So instead of any, any game that might release, let's say a, a building, you know, you want to build a hotel on your land, uh, that's something that could come in the form of an NFT, but instead of Cornucopius deciding to sell hotel NFTs that people can place on their land, those hotels need to be built. So, within the Cornucopius universe, uh, you will be able to collect wood and collect nails and collect things that are required to build a hotel within the universe, and then it's turned into a hotel. You can either choose to take that hotel and put it on your own land, or you can contribute that that build uh, into a, a, a NFT sale. And as a result of whoever purchases those NFTs, the people who built the NFTs, they get a, a portion of the revenue from, from that sale. So in that way, the the earning opportunities of the Cornucopius universe is meant to be sustainable. It's meant to be truly player driven by the in-game activity that takes place. Uh, so the, the, the growth of the in-game economy is very much going to be based on the, what the players do. Uh, so that's, that's one of the many ways that like earning will, will manifest itself. Uh, if people are buying NFTs, the Cornucopius economy will grow because in-game players will be more incentivized to participate more and to build more and to do more in-game activities. That's 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 what it's meant to be. Um, but then there's other ways, like you can create businesses within the Cornucopius universe. You can you can you know manufacture clothes and sell them mm -hmm. just like you could in something like old school RuneScape. Uh, and and as you accumulate you know gold, uh, that's you know that's your earnings from it. And you can use that gold to make more money, just like any any you know sort of business in that way cornucopius is kind of a simulator for uh, i i like to use the term economy simulator mm -hmm. because the mechanics that they're throwing together for it is is really built around player activity uh and i think that's that's what makes cornucopius very unique in, in the realm of uh of, of gaming so if, if, if there's no limit to this to, to what you just said um can i open a cab company can i invest into car nfts and hire a driver who's going to drive people around to get from point a to point b is instead of walking or using the train e even more than that like you can you can accumulate nfts and rent them out to other people you could create a car rental business within mm -hmm. the, the universe you can also rent out <laughs> land that sounds the, amazing the, the, yeah right, uh, yeah so like Oh, a car rental business inside of a game, man. It's so, sorry I'm laughing here, but that sounds really, so ridiculous, and I know that it can be done. So it's 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 a little bit funny, but uh, that's awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the... It's a, it's it's like surprisingly not complicated stuff. Like the technology exists to be able to do that yeah. kind of stuff now. Um, it's it's just like it's never been executed to this scope before, where uh, they're building in all of these economy mechanics. Uh, to, to give players the freedom to really create whatever they want within this universe. That's true. That's true. I mean, um, just listening to you talk about everything here, um, you know, reminds me that Cornucopia isn't a regular Web 3 game. It's it's not a regular Web 2 game either. It's uh, it's in a league of its own. And um, uh, I understand why they don't want to use the term play to earn because they also want to distinguish themselves from the other play to earn games. Um, mm -hmm. Because Cornucopia, is, after all, is not play to earn or play and earn it is a proper 
MMO metaverse with many genres inside. The, the, you know, it's so broad and so new that there's not even a label for it. Right. So we would just call it Cornucopius. And yeah. um, I, I cannot believe that such a game is so under the radar that, uh, and I told you this before we started recording, I, I asked uh, my community over on Telegram, do you have any questions? I'm, I'm going to have a sort of interview slash podcast video with a community member from Cornucopias. And they were like, what is Cornucopias? <laughs> I was flabbergasted. I was like, what? How do you not know what Cornucopias is? You know, and this is my community we're talking about. That was a little bit like, what? Are you kidding me? How do you not know? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so so why do you think that is? Do, do, do you think people just don't understand the scope of what Cornucopias is trying to accomplish, or is it something else? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, people don't understand the scope a lot of times because they've never heard about it before. And I, I think that's kind of symptomatic of the fact that Cornucopias uh, started building and first started developing within the Cardano ecosystem, which has operated kind of on an island for a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, uh, because because of the the up to this point lack of interoperability between cardano and other ecosystems the the technical talent that has existed in the in the um cardano ecosystem versus uh more more evm based uh e ecosystems um the, there hasn't really really been that that uh trade of of users in in each ecosystem so people in the cardano ecosystem that that have spent any time on any major cardano platforms they know who Cornucopius is. Yeah. Cornucopius is the biggest uh, game project within the, the Cardano ecosystem. But the, the Cardano ecosystem, like I said, is, is operated on an island uh, for a while up to this point. So Cornucopius, uh, it, it's, it's not a Cardano project. Uh, Cardano uh, or Cornucopius has, has uh, started marketed on Cardano. itself. It started on Cardano, yes. But the plan has always been to expand multi-chain. Uh, so Cornucopius is currently in in base. Uh, it's it's also on the Ethereum layer one. It's on the Binance smart chain. They've expanded into uh, a, a ecosystem called uh, Apex Fusion, um, and, and there will be others in the in the long term future of of Cornucopius. But the 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 whole point of Cornucopius is accessibility. Yeah. They they want people to be able to come in and participate within the Cornucopius universe, whether they're a gamer, whether they're a blockchain enthusiast or uh you know whether they're interested in different opportunities within the cornucopius universe so i think it's it's really more of a fact of that like uh, cornucopius is still very early when it comes to its multi-chain expansion and it's starting to get out there and get the attention of more people now uh and and you know as as it's gotten out there it still hasn't sunk in for a lot of people yet that or the the vision of what it is that that they're building um so it's a uh, it's you know the, these kinds of things take time. Yeah. Uh, it's 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 on its way, but um, it just it hasn't hit yet. It's still very early. That that's a very good point, and I like your analogy of um, Cardano being an island. Uh, that, that is that is so true. I've been a big supporter, big fan of Cardano. Uh, ever since I first joined crypto, I immediately went into Cardano. I immediately loved it. I immediately joined the community. Immediately started staking, and now the ecosystem of Cardano is also is expanding. You know, with a with a Vesper wallet, things have changed so much. The first really good mobile wallet, I, I love to use it. I use it all the time, and uh, I've even switched from. I, I didn't use Daedalus anymore. I didn't use Yorai anymore. I, I'm just full on Vesper fanboy at this point. I just love how how good it works. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, we <laughs> started, started going off topic a little bit here. Um, yeah, I, I get passionate about the Cardano ecosystem. Um, moving on to the, the, the topic of Cornucopias, I think that the, those are some very good points. And uh, it is still very early in Cornucopias journey. So um, that that's definitely, you know, one of the reasons why it's going a little bit under the radar. But at the same time, it's also not a bad thing uh, because if a project gets overhyped, it's almost impossible to deliver. Almost impossible. I mean, look at look at games like um, like Cyberpunk 2077. When that that game, people were so hyped about it, and the game released, and I played it, and uh, I I wasn't too hyped when it came out, and I played it, and I beat it, and I had fun with the game. I was like, this this is a great game. It's not 10 out of 10, but it's a great game. I look at the reviews. I'm like, what the hell is going on? Why do people hate it so much? It's generally a good game, but it didn't deliver on the hype. So that that's also one of the cases where you know. Um, getting too well known too soon, maybe isn't you know also a good thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, anyway, to to go back to our 
uh, talking points we have here. Something I wanted to mention is um, the economic model of the game. We have touched upon this a little bit here by you know talking about the various earning uh, opportunities and and NFT elements. Um, but also for, for those who don't know, Cornucopias has a token, and it, uh, the token is called Copy, and the, the the token trades on Cardano, but most likely it also trades on all the chains that you have mentioned now, right? Yep. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Okay, so the, the token has been out for a while, and um, what would you say is going to be the sort of utility for the token inside of the game? If th I'm guessing there's going to be lots of utility for the token inside of the game, so would you care to elaborate on that a bit? Yeah, so it's a, it's a very unique system. Uh, the, the entire Cornucopius ecosystem does center around the Kopi token, but uh, the the Kopi token will not actually exist directly within the Cornucopius universe. So there will be an exchange rate between uh, exchanging Kopi tokens for in-game currency, right? Um, and, and the reason that they do that is to make it accessible to traditional gamers that, that don't really want to deal with crypto in any way, shape, or form. So when, when traditional gamers come in and they want to purchase things like in-game assets, they want to purchase skins, they want to purchase uh, in-game currency, they, they will have that option to exchange US dollars or, or, or euros or whatever currency into Kopi tokens. Uh, but they, they won't know that they're purchasing Kopi tokens because what's happening is they're exchanging their currency for Kopi tokens so that the Kopi tokens can be exchanged for the in-game assets that they're wanting to purchase. To them, it'll be just like any game that they're playing. They're just purchasing in-game assets mm -hmm. and, and they own those assets and they can use them within the game. But that that money that's being put into the ecosystem is going into the Kopi token. Uh, and, and, you know, that, that's, that's amazing. I, I think it's a brilliant model because it, 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 it creates a, a sort of retention of, of those... Uh, uh, that liquidity, let's say, um, it, it creates a retention for that money because they're they're purchasing Kopi tokens, but they're not going to go and sell Kopi tokens because they they they're not into crypto. They they don't they don't want to participate in that side of the world, and that's a uh, that's that's I think the the power of of what Web three gaming could be is it can create all of the advantages and freedoms of digital ownership that blockchain gaming brings. But it's such a seamless experience that people aren't going to know the difference between blockchain gaming and, and traditional gaming. So that's, that's the experience that they're trying to create. Um, the Kopi token has a variety of utilities uh, that, that can offer things both within the game and within the, the, the crypto side of things. So there are bonuses that you get by, by staking certain different uh, amounts of Kopi tokens. And those bonuses can come in the form of uh, additional yield for potentially like yield farming or providing liquidity to the cornucopius ecosystem so that people can make those trades, people can make those purchases. But there will also be bonuses in, in the form of uh, special badges or, or special uh, skins or, or different gaming assets that you will be able to get for free or exclusive access to by, by using those tokens within the ecosystem. So in that way, it's very dual purposed. Uh, the Kopi token is is the the fuel of the ecosystem, but it's also not necessary for everybody to to own uh, in order to, to to tap into the ecosystem. So that's that's that would be my description of it. Yeah. So Cornucopius really is all about accessibility. So anybody can join without having any bias before him, whether you are into crypto or you're not into crypto. It doesn't matter if you're into crypto, you have many options to utilize crypto. If you're not into crypto, yep. you have many options to never touch it and you can still exactly. play the game. If you like base, you can play it with the base chain. If you like Binance Smart Chain, you can play it with the Binance Smart Chain. But why would you? You have Cardano. I don't understand those people. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the thought. No, but, I'm, I'm, know, just I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Of course, of course. I'm, I'm, I'm just joking. Um, yeah. So, yeah, m um, moving on to a, a few more talking points that I have here. But looking at my list of talking points, kind of whatever we touch on, you know, we also talk about some other things. And uh, anyway, I, I like this kind of, you know, a little bit of a back and forth kind of podcast style more than an interview. Uh, but yeah. I do have these talking points. So one of the things that I have written down here, uh, do you think it's, it's a good idea to buy Kopi land? And I will take this as financial advice. <laughs> <laughs> well, unfortunately, I don't give financial advice, but uh, oh, damn it. Uh, 
Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, I own another, a, a number of cornucopious assets. Uh, the, the land assets are, I think, the center of the in-game economy. Because in order for you to really uh, maximize your, your earning potential, if that is an option that you choose to pursue, um, you have to be able to produce things. Mm -hmm. And the, the best way to be able to produce things is to be able to have land where you can you know, create the tools. You know, you can create furnaces so that you can do some metalworking or, or tanneries so that you can uh, uh, create clothing out of out of like leather and things like that. So it, it increases your capacity to be able to contribute to the in-game economy if you own land. Uh, or if you know somebody that owns land that can offer uh, your your capability to be able to use that land. Um, and and there will be different functions in there to allow asset owners to be able to do those kinds of things. Um, so yeah, can you can uh, you rent can you rent that land? Can you lend yes, you can. lend it and rent it? You can, yeah. Okay. You can you can lend it. You can rent it. Okay. If you're a part of a guild, you'll have the be uh, the ability to utilize guild owned land so that uh, guild members can participate on that land. Okay. So, awesome. Yeah. So there's there's a variety of different ways that people can tap into land. But the, the, the most reliable way is, is to actually own it yourself. Yeah, so. yeah. Especially right now, um, the, the current price for the land in Cornucopias is not that high, in my opinion. And I think when, and this, uh, again, we, we don't give financial advice out here. I'm, I'm just saying my opinion is that the right. land will skyrocket. As we have seen in many games in the past, the land is not too expensive before the game comes out. But once it does and people realize how useful it is, yeah, the money printer starts printing. Um, mm. But anyway, as we said don't just buy a land because i said this do, do your research if you think you need it get it if you think you hate it you can keep hating it and that that's it i I'll never give financial advice so there's a huge disclaimer here just in your opinion how big do you think cornucopias can get and get as bullish as you want here this is just your personal take on this well uh so i mean like as as somebody that's been a long time cornucopias enthusiast i you know the sky is the limit it's it's you know there's there's no end in sight, but like I've talked to a lot of other people uh, to that have played things like World of Warcraft. I'm I'm in touch with a couple of people that have ranked in like you know the the top 100 uh, players within the the World of War and and multiple people that fit in this category. Um, I, I've talked to a lot of different people that are you know just traditional gamers that and I give them my spiel about and and they're really excited about the idea. I think the the uh, IP behind Cornucopius is very unique uh where it's it's for sure you know every everybody you know there's there's sci-fi games all over the place there's space games all over the place you know it's it's a cornucopius is really unique in that it sort of combines a, a lot of elements from you know what people thought the future was gonna look like back in the 80s if you think like back to the mm -hmm. future 2 and and things like that if you think the jetsons and, and things like that nobody has really created this kind of sort of retro futuristic uh, model before um and, and especially not to this level of, of quality when it comes to the graphics that's true uh, so yeah oftentimes uh rob and josh often throw around like millions of players millions of gamers and i think that's totally within reach because of the uniqueness of the game the innovative gameplay behind it and the different uh capacities that are enabled in this game that that aren't really uh, they don't exist in other other types of games. You know, the earning opportunities is is, is really unique. Um, so I think the way that they've designed it is 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 different. Uh, I think that it's something that traditional gamers are going to be really excited about, and we're going to find out. I think in the next few years, as we start marketing to to traditional gamers and getting a feel for you know what it is that they're looking for and uh, and and how we can fill those needs. So um, I think millions of players I, I i legitimately think that this has the potential to be the next big mmo i feel like we haven't had one of those like you know huge mmos like world of warcraft level mmos since uh since guild wars 2 um and i, I think this is going to be the next one i mean you look at even crypto games um even in the last cycle crypto games have had more than a million players so yeah. saying that uh, Cornucopius is going to get millions of players is well within reach, um, especially if you take into account that this is a blockchain game. So even if it stays purely for Web3 players, there are more than enough players to be millions. Yeah. But then you also branch out to the Web2 players who 
in my opinion, this may be the, the one game that will bring them on board because this is not a game that throws NFTs at your face. You have the option if you like the blockchain. If you don't, you don't have to do any of that. And I think that's going to be a big, a big, a big selling point because unfortunately, NFTs have a very bad rep in Web2. I have a Web2 gaming community as well from back in my old days on YouTube. And I do ask them from time to time what they think, you know, and well, do they watch my new channel at all. And they don't. And they hate crypto. They, they, they respect me because they've been watching me for a while, but they don't understand why I chose crypto and why I'm playing these NFT games, as they call them. They, they call them NFT games. And uh, they, they think it's all yeah. a scam. And with good reason you know I, I i don't blame them at all this unfortunately this space is riddled with scammers and we, we, you could you, all you have to do is just look under the comment section of either of our videos you will probably find a scammer if we didn't remove the comment on time and on, on twitter and telegram and people impersonating and those are just the small scams not even talking about the um, big projects that do scams and then disappear off the face of the earth so unfortunately it, it is a problem and um projects like cornucopia can definitely change change that perception and and, and gamers and I, I hope they do I, I genuinely hope they do because this space is so much so much more if they would just let us show them but for for now they're they're close to it so i'm also excited to see how cornucopia is going to tackle the web two gamers and if they will succeed or not yep so yeah i do share your opinion in that that chronicopius will have millions of players and that is not a prediction that is a spoiler yeah <laughs> true facts spoiler, <laughs> facts like yeah yeah um do you think chronicopius has any competitors in what they're trying to do not even looking at the web three side of things do you have they have any competitors at all uh I mean, like, competitors is a, a weird word because, uh, I mean, like, there are lots of, of games that, that I'm a fan of, uh, a lot, lots of games that Cornucopius is a fan of. And I, I think that, especially in the realm of, like, Web3 gaming compared to uh, just general mainstream crypto, I, I tend to observe the, the Web3 gaming space as a lot less maximalist than, than uh, other areas of yeah. crypto. Uh, and and I true. think the reason for that is that like you know traditional gamers, you know, they they play more than one game. You know, yeah, people people do play, can play, and and will play more than one game. Yeah. Generally speaking, uh, so you know it, it's it's in that way it, it allows uh, Cornucopius and and other Web three gaming projects to collaborate uh, a little bit better because you know you, you, everybody can have a, a lot of the same different types of players. Uh, we, we can have the same gaming communities because it's it's you know it's not one way or the other. Uh, but um, yeah, I mean like I, I'd say that there are uh, competitors uh, in 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 the space. Um, I, I think games like like Star Atlas and uh, uh, um, Wilder Worlds are, are Wilder World, yeah, yeah, uh, great examples that are doing a lot of very similar things to what Cornucopius is doing. Um, those are different games that I think are very uh, aligned in 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 what you know we're all trying to do in this industry of Web three gaming. Uh, so so yeah, I, I guess I would identify them as as uh, competitors, but uh, not not a, not in a hostile tone. Kind no, of, of course, of uh, course, this, this wasn't meant to be a yeah. hostile kind of question. It was it was it was sure. more it was more meant to be. Um, what other games will the same profile of person play that uh, maybe i should have phrased it a little bit differently but um yeah definitely wasn't meant to be anything anything hostile you know oh. especially in web 3 you know we're different than in web 2 it's you know the very territorial people you, you say something bad about their favorite game oh man you know <laughs> oh man the fire lights lights up for us it's a little bit different we our space is so new and um there's no crypto game i hate I, wa I want yeah. them all to succeed. I wish them all nothing but luck. And any game, even Axie Infinity succeeding, it leads the whole space forward. So I, I, I definitely don't want to hate on any of them, except, of course, the grifters and scammers, but they don't even count in that category. Right, right. Um, so um, to the, the final two talking points I wrote down here. Um, the first one is uh, being on Cardano versus being on other chains. Do you think there is um, an advantage to being on Cardano or do you think there's disadvantages? Maybe a little bit of both. What are your thoughts on this compared to other chains? Yeah, 
Definitely both. Um, like, I, I think that people ignore a lot of times the advantages that, that Cardano brings. It is a superior decentralization, and yeah. that's backed up by data. Yeah. Um, it's it's su superior security. Cardano has never been hacked before. If you look on DeFi Llama and look at the hack section, you're not going to find Cardano on that list, but you, you will find every other major chain uh, on, wow. on that list. Wow. Um, yeah, it's... it's uh, it, th there's there's a lot of superiority when it comes to uh, the the I should say uh, uptime you know for for Cardano Cardano's never going to go down you can always expect it to be reliable it that doesn't mean that it's a perfect chain there's there's improvements that need to be made in the realm of scalability there's improvements that need to be made in the realm of different features that can integrate with with your know, regular society that can collaborate with governments that can uh, be available for people to use um, for you know decentralized identity solutions that's that's something that cardano has been talking about for a long time yeah. and we're not there yet you know there's improvements that need to be made but uh obviously uh, there's there's clear advantages when it comes to that reliability side of it um but uh i mean as as far as like accessibility goes if you're really trying to get out there and and get as many users as possible the 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 future of blockchain is multi-chain yeah um you you have to meet people where they are you can't expect them to come to you so uh, i i admire multi-chain projects the most um even though i create cardano based content i constantly push and encourage projects to to consider multi-chain because it's a uh, it's the the space is supposed to be about collaborative efforts you know if, if people are working together it creates more growth economically. It creates more symbiosis than it does being isolated and trying to otherize uh, uh, other other ecosystems. So that's my view on it. You know, there's advantages and disadvantages, but uh, you know, it's uh, I, I veer on the side of collaboration. Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, that's um, uh, th th that's very true. I, I agree with you 100%. Uh, the future is multi-chain, and um, we have, especially with crypto games, you know, we have so many options right now that at some point in the future, I can see even myself, you know, looking at it from from my point of view as a, just as a consumer, not even as a, as a content creator. Um, if the game that I want to play, it's not on the chain that I'm currently using, where I have my funds, I'm not gonna bother. I'll just play a game that's on my chain already. So, or yeah. any of the other games that are more multi-chain so that's from a consumer point of view obviously as a content creator i have all the chains i have all the wallets they're all funded and it's a giant big mess and if i, if I lose my little flash drive that has all my passwords i'm done but yeah, <laughs> yeah luckily that's backed up in a couple of places so that's good um i i i would like to see more cross-chain interoperability um that's something that's definitely lacking and that's something that could bring the whole space a little bit forward um but when it, in my opinion at least when it, when it comes to you know blockchain projects like we have cardano solana etc um those people are way more territorial than the gamers are in, in our space gamers are like eh, this is on ethereum okay uh, metamask oh this is on cardano huh, huh, let's, let's get vesper you know but, but you know when it, so far because we don't have enough games yet you know right, but right. um yeah when it, when it comes to you know the chains themselves those people get very territorial they hate on other chains uh, I, I think it's a little bit of a toxic environment at the moment going on um but at the same time there are people like you know like you and me who try try to push the, the multi-chain and try to get the people to come together you know we just want to be one yeah. big happy family with big bags <laughs> mm -hmm. and um yeah what what are your do you have any final thoughts anything else you would like to share with the people watching this video um based on anything we talked about on chronocopio and cardano or about yourself any any final remarks you have I guess, you know, like, I, I respect people making their own decisions and making their own choices and stuff, but I would I would discourage people from, from veering away from any project or not looking in, in any project based on what chain that it's built on. Uh, because, uh, you know, projects like Cornucopius is a perfect example of that. Nobody knows yet, and it's still incredibly early where where the project is at and where it's developing, but it's it's, like, such insane potential that people are missing out by taking on that attitude and and you know cornucopius it's it's going to be the biggest handcrafted in-game universe in web 3. you don't you don't break that record by not building something impressive and you can choose 
to turn your head and, and you know, look the other way, or, you know, you, you can take an honest look at it and, and look at things in terms of value instead of, you know, look at look, what chain that it started on, you know, um, look at principles because, uh, there, there are lots of projects out there that are building incredibly valuable things that, uh, nobody is paying attention to because of little, you know, stupid nitty gritty stuff like that. And to each their own, you're free to make your own choices. But, uh, but, but that would be my, my suggestion is, uh, don't let that get in the way of, of looking at value. That that's amazing. Very good final remarks. I definitely a hundred percent agree with that. Um, no matter what the chain, even if it's Solana, I'm still, still going to look into it. <laughs> All right, Josh, uh, thank you so much for, for joining us for this little, I don't even know what to call it, interview podcast. I don't know. You, you, you guys, uh, you guys can decide what this is. So, uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you for sharing all your insights. It was a pleasure to have you on, man.